Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the course, How to Use Zebra HC. This is video 34, and today we're talking about the delay module. So let's right click the display port and hit preset, and let's load in a delay. Boom. Okay, so basically, when this defaults here, the mix knob's gonna be down. So if we play something, we're not gonna hear anything until we turn this up. Then we have a delay. So let's turn down our X back here for now. We're gonna come back to that, and then let's bring up our feedback. So we have a regular delay. So basically this delay, there's a lot going on with it here. It has four delay lines, time scaling, pan control, low and high pass filters, four different modes, including cross feeding and delays. If any of that's confusing, bear with me here. We're gonna go through all of that. So before we get into that though, let's go to the basic stuff here before we dive into the nuts and bolts of the whole thing. So we have low pass here, right? We can drag this down if we want our delays to be a little duller once they feed back. So basically cutting off the top end and then the opposite is true for the high pass. If you don't want that low end delaying, then we can bring this knob up. And then we have pan for each different delay line, right? So these columns here, this one, two, three, and four are basically all these separate delay lines. Right now we're in stereo two, so these three and four are basically irrelevant, but we have these time syncing here where we sync it with our BPM. We have all of these here, but we do have the one second, which is basically in time. So we can control the different timings here with the ratio knob, which is kind of nice because we're basically scaling it from this sync value, right? From zero to 200%. So let's check this out here. So both of these are on one over four. And we have an, we hear an even delay in both the left side and the right side. But if we change this ratio knob a little bit like this, our delays are a little bit out of sync, right? We're kind of scaling the one on the left-hand side. And the way to think about this, right, if we turn the knob to the left, it's going to speed up the delay. If we turn it to the right, it's going to slow down the delay. So we did it to the right a little bit. That's why we hear the right channel hit first, and then the left side is a little bit later based on these pan knobs here. If we want the left side to hit a little bit quicker, so right before the right side hits, we turn this a little bit to the left. And keep in mind, these ratio knobs are actually modulatable in the modulation matrix, which gives <laughs> some really crazy results. I'll leave that to you to discover. And then we have our panning over here, right? So if we want just delays on the right-hand side, we can do that as well. So that's kind of the basics of it here. So let's kind of dial in or get into the craziness of how cool this delay really is. So we have all these different modes, right? And we have stereo two, multi-tap four, W2 plus two, or serial two. And once we scroll through these, we really don't notice anything change here, but it, just the behavior of this is gonna change. So by default, it starts off with stereo two, and that's basically a stereo delay, which uses delay one and two, which we were using, right? Remember how I said three and four are kind of irrelevant at this stage. Then we can go to multi-tap four. So that's four delays in series or in parallel. So basically one, two, three, and four. And then we have W2 plus two, which is two instances of stereo two in series. And then the last one is gonna be serial two, which is a ping pong delay using delay one and two only. So that's all cool and fun, but until we actually really see and hear what's going on, we, it's kind of hard to understand these different modes. So Let's go to stereo two and luckily the creators of the manual have included the diagrams which I have here for you guys. So the first one is going to be the stereo two. So taking a look at this diagram here, the signal comes in on the left channel, it goes into the first delay, goes to low pass, high pass, and then it does its regular feedback, right? It kind of comes out and it feeds back and so on and so forth. But what's interesting is once this goes through the filters, it comes down and it goes through the X back or the cross back, right? And it goes into the second delay and then it goes out here, does its feedback and it also crosses back into the first one. So it's kind of interesting. You might think, okay, what is this actually doing? So I kind of wait to hear what's actually going on in this diagram. If we went to a new preset here, we have our first oscillator. Let's put that one to the left channel. Let's add another one. And for oscillator two, let's change this to a sine wave. So it's really easy to tell which one is which. Pan this to the right and then maybe bring this up an octave here. So we have a saw wave in the left as we can disable this here. And then a sine wave in the right channel. So now let's bring up the delay module yet again. And we're on stereo number two, or stereo two. Let's bring up our mix here. And for now, let's remove our feedback and just use X back. So take a listen to see what happens here. So if that's not completely obvious, what's basically happening, I'll press a key and then that key delays the signal, kind of how we would think. And then after that, the left channel goes into the right channel and the right channel goes into the left channel. It's very easy to hear if we disable one of these oscillators, right? So take a listen to this. And we can see the meters here 
moving as well. And same happens for the sine wave. So it's a very cool concept for the cross cross feedback or cross feedback delays or whatever you want to call it. It's very interesting how that works out there. So if you have a lot of panning going on or some really interesting soundscape for a patch here and you use some delays, maybe the crossback might be a cool option for you. Okay, so moving on from here, let's go through the other modes here. So let's add the delay back here. And for now, let's remove the crossback and kind of just focus on the feedback for now. Now, the next one is going to be multi-tap four, right? So remember, multi-tap four is four delays in parallel. So we're using all four of these. Now, it's interesting because here's the left side and here's the right side. So let's follow the left-hand side first, right? It goes here and it goes down. It goes in the first delay and then this one goes down here. There's the cross back and it goes into the second delay, down into the third delay, down in the fourth delay. Now, the right channel, it's going here. We go up here and it hits the second delay and then it goes down and it hits the third delay and it goes down, hits the fourth delay, it goes down. Here's the cross back here. It goes out of the fourth one all the way to the left here, up and then to the first one, which is really, really interesting. So looking at these diagrams, we can kind of stare at this and be like, oh, okay, I see what's actually going on here. And then now we can always adjust whatever ratio we want. So we have multi-tap, right? We can have one over two, one over four, one over eight, one over 16. And kind of change a little bit of these ratios here if we want to kind of have something crazy going on. And then if that's not enough, you can always add in a second delay, which is really cool. So you can have eight delay lines in <laughs> one patch, which is freaking crazy. Okay, let's go to a new preset again. Let's re enable or call up this uh, second delay or first delay again and uh now we're going to w2 plus 2 so remember w2 plus 2 is two instances of stereo 2 in series so that's going to be this guy so we have the left channel and the right channel so let's follow the left here it goes into the first delay low pass high pass goes into our panning here and then now it goes into the third delay low pass high pass again and then it comes back and starts feeding back on the third delay line and then the interesting spot as well is the third delay comes down for the cross back and then goes into the fourth delay and that comes back out and goes back into the third delay. So it's kind of interesting to wrap your head around as far as where is the feedback happening and where's the cross back happening. In this situation it's happening on delays three and four. So the next set of stereo delays. So yeah, maybe stare at that a little bit, pause the video, maybe look at the manual to kind of let that soak in a little bit. But uh, yeah, that is W2 plus two if you ever need it. The next one is going to be Serial 2, which is ping pong delay using delays 1 and 2 only. And that is going to be right over here. So we have left and right. So they come in and then they kind of sum right over here. They go up to the first delay and that goes low pass, high pass. And then here's the feedback. And then it goes down to delay 2 and low pass, high pass. And here is where the crossback is happening and so on and so forth. So like I said, take a look at this, kind of see what's happening, where the feedback is actually going on and where the crossback is going on as well and where the pan knobs actually are happening because it's kind of interesting as well to know. So yeah, those are the different delay modes here. It's kind of a kind of a lot going through this delay module. There's a lot to play with here. <laughs> so yeah, have fun with this delay. Hopefully you learned something. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.